Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a hashtag event sponsored by the Creative Arts Collaboration, which is a Facebook group over on Facebook that supports people who are doing creative art and crafting and things like that on YouTube. It's just a community over there and they used to always have hashtag events and then they kind of stopped doing it and this one is called hashtag summer art reboot there's lots of summer art out there if you just if you use the old hashtag hashtag summer art you'll find it if you use the new hashtag summer art reboot you will find even more that's been all coming out today on the 15th of june so summer what what is summer art i thought to myself and i said you know what i really like in summer i like ice cream <laughs> It's just such a summery thing, whether you make ice cream, whether you buy ice cream, whether you buy ice cream sandwiches or little, you know, chocolate covered bars, or maybe you go out to ice cream. Um, it's just a summer thing. It's something that really reminds me of summer. So I thought it would be fun to do a little mixed media piece with an ice cream cone. So I decided to draw the ice cream cone on a four by six canvas panel. So this is a small little piece of art. It's not, it's not huge. It's bigger than an ATC, but it's not big. Um, I drew it with a graphite pencil. And then when I was happy with my drawing, I decided to do an underpainting. Sometimes I do an underpainting when I'm doing paper painting. Sometimes I don't. And it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. I wanted to flesh this out. I wanted to see what it would look like with colors. I knew I wanted bright, summery colors that make you think of going to the pool and, you know, sitting around and having ice cream or pina coladas or margaritas or whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> I, I really felt like I needed to paint it. So I got out some Dina Wakely heavy body acrylic paints and I will list all the colors in the description box below, of course. And I just used a, a, mostly an angle brush to paint this. And I have a little white and then I've got some uh, different other colors from Dina Wakely just to see what it would look like. Some, some of you probably think, you know, why bother to do the acrylic painting if you're going to do something else? <laughs> I am going to completely cover this with collage. I didn't know that at the time. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I would just collage the ice cream and leave the painted background. Maybe I would add some other type of textures in the background. Maybe I would stencil. Maybe I would drip. I actually did really consider dripping because that would be perfect to have a drippy background on an ice cream thing. I wasn't sure. I just, um, I could have even just done an acrylic painting, but who am I? I'm a collage artist. I'm a mixed media artist. I don't tend to do just acrylic painting. There's lots of people who do, and they do an awesome job, way better than I ever could. I like to do collage. I like to glue paper to things. I like to have all kinds of funny papers that have pattern and variation of color. And then I like to glue them to things. It's what I do. It's not all I do, but it's what I do. So I um, didn't have any brown color that was in the Dina Wakely. So I did use some Liquitex Basics brown paint. Um, and the white is also Liquitex, but all the other ones are the Dina Wakely paint. The ice cream cone should not be that color. It should be more yellow. And I realized that as I was painting it. And that's the one, you know, that's a good reason to, to do your underpainting. It also keeps you in line where everything is supposed to go. It keeps your composition balanced. I did feel that my cone was slightly too far to the left. So in the collage process, I fixed that. So, you know, this is just the underpainting. So then the next thing I did was make some basically pattern pieces. I went over with some translucent deli paper and I drew around the shapes that I had drawn on and painted onto the canvas. This gives me pieces to collage on and I like to do this method. This is something that I came up with on my own as far as I know. <laughs> I don't know of anyone else out there doing it where I use deli paper 
I collage over the top of the deli paper and then cut it out and apply it to the canvas or other substrate. This gives me more precision and it's easier than tearing uh, pieces, small pieces and applying them with inside a line. You know, it's kind of that idea of coloring inside the lines. I have done a lot of paper paintings like that. I just find this to be more satisfying, quicker and easier for me to do. So I started out with the bottom piece. I had wanted that to be yellow with a, with a touch of green to match the top ice cream uh, cone, ice cream, what, what do you, scoop. There we go. Wow. It took me a minute. <laughs> um, I want, when, when you're doing a painting or a collage or whatever you're doing, for composition wise, if you have a color in one place, you should put that color somewhere else. And so I had the idea that my base was going to be ye yellow, but then I was going to have this little bit of this bright green. So this particular piece of paper that I found in my stash worked for that because it had some circles on it and they were in green and then the background was yellow. Then I found another piece and all these pieces of paper I have pulled out of my stash. I didn't create anything specifically for this project. I like to have a large collection of stuff that I can use at any moment. Sometimes I do make painting papers specifically for a project. This does definitely happen. I want certain colors, I want certain patterns, and my stash isn't going to do that for me. But other times I just want to grab the stuff that I already have. Maybe they're full pieces, maybe they're scraps from another project. It's really nice to just have this collection. And my smaller pieces, my tiny pieces, I put in some plastic boxes. I call those my color boxes and they're stacked on the shelf so that I can see what color they are. And then the larger pieces I have in plastic folders that have um, a flap that folds down so the things don't fall out. And whenever I gel print, whenever I stencil, whenever I do uh, any type of paint to paper, I keep all those pieces the ones that I didn't use for the project that I was making them for. And then I just always have them on hand. So I started out with my ice cream. Well, first I did my background, the, the yellowy green on the bottom. And then I found this really cool piece that had blue with like some scratchy um, pink that kind of was going to coordinate with my pink scoop. So I was excited about that. That was a print made by uh, using a wax crayon resist plate, putting wax on a piece of tag board and then using it to remove paint and leave some paint. And then, yeah, anyway, you know, I've got a ton, 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 ton of gel printing videos. If you want to see how I made that, you can certainly look on my gel printing collection and you will find it. It's a wax crayon resist technique. Then I started working on my scoops. Uh, I started with a solid piece on the scoops. And remember these are, I've drawn around the patterns and the patterns are on the back. So I will be able to see when I flip those over where to cut. So I can put some different papers on there that make me happy, starting with a kind of a solid piece in the background and then adding some pattern pieces to it to make my scoops. I did the pink one and the green one. Now I'm working on my cone. This is a, a cake cone. And I started with a yellowish um, piece. I was thinking about how the cones have patterns on them, but I didn't want to go crazy with it. So I know that that there's like a grid pattern on most cones. And so I had this magazine paper that was in my stash, in my browns and neutrals. And it has that type of a crosshatch grid pattern on it. And so I used a little piece of it to just give a nod to the pattern that is on, actually on ice cream cones when they're pressed into their molds or whatever. It does have some type of a little grid pattern at the bottom. I don't know specifically. I didn't look it up. <laughs> so then I cut that piece out and I stuck it down. Now I can see some of my underpainting, but I did cover most of it up. Normally I wouldn't do it quite like that, but I knew that I was going to not want to fuss too much about going around the edges because I was going to cover it up. So then I cut out my pink scoop 
and I collage that on. I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and a Distress Collage Brush, which is like a flat, wide brush to apply this. I apply it to the canvas as well as the back of the paper. Sometimes I spritz the back of the paper if I feel like it's too heavy and it's going to give me a hard time, I can, I can spritz it and it will soften up the paper fibers. So you might see my pink squirt bottle coming in. Of course, this is sped up. This isn't real time. Uh, it would take a long time to show you this. It took about an hour, 51 minutes, I believe, was the total of the time when I put it into the video. So some of it sped up four times fast, some of it sped up eight times fast. It just depends. So then I had my cone, my scoops. Now I need my little accessory pieces. When you go to a fancy ice cream place, you know, maybe it's a fancy gelato place. Maybe it's um, some other kind of scooped ice cream place. They sometimes give you things on it. Uh, my gelato place that I like to go to gives me little uh, wafer cookie type things stuck in the gelato. And then I've also seen sometimes where they give you a maraschino cherry on top. So I added both those things just to give it a little bit more, uh, you know, fanciness. This is a real, this is a fancy ice cream cone. It's not just your average ice cream cone. This is a fancy one. Maybe I should have put it in a waffle cone. I didn't think of that <laughs> instead of a cake cone. I like the taste of the cake cones. So I tend to get them. But a waffle cone would have been awesome too. I would have needed a little bit longer. Um, canvas though. I would need a long skinny canvas to you know extend that cone out and make it pointy at the bottom. So then once I had all my collage pieces on I started to do some finishing and I wanted to add a little bit of lighter blue to the background. My original color had been that sky color from Dina Wakely and this piece of paper was darker so I just added in a little bit of that lighter color with my finger and added some more color variation into the background just a simple easy way to do that then I needed sprinkles and there's two different types of sprinkles one of them is like little rectangles or oblong pieces and the other one is is uh, dots and I've had both type of sprinkles I don't know that sprinkles really have a taste they're just sweet but they sure make things pretty. <laughs> so I took some of the same papers, I cut a very thin strip out of each one, and then I just took the scissors and went snip, 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 and made the long skinny kind of sprinkles that you sometimes get. I'm not sure why there's more than one kind of sprinkle. These days there's like, there's like amazing sprinkle custom collections with, you know, shiny balls and shimmery stuff and whatever. I mean, there's so much of that type of stuff out these days, but I was just going for the basics. So attach my sprinkles. I just used one of my scrubby brushes. I put some, some matte gel medium down and then I took a ball stylus and I dipped it a little bit so that it had just a tiny bit of stickiness. And that helps me to pick up those tiny little pieces and stick them down into the matte medium that I've already put on the the paper and then I go back over it with that same scrubby glue brush just to press them down and make sure they're stuck. Um, I tried to make them random. I tried them to, tried to overlap some of them and then I thought maybe some of them could spill uh, down onto my background as well so I added some down on the the table or whatever you want to call that surface down below as well. Same colors, same process, just uh, sticking them down below. I went a little bit off screen there. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm telling you, I'm sticking sprinkles down there. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> I need to adjust my camera slightly because I zoomed in, but then I didn't bend the camera down. Um, to, And so I ended up kind of getting it close to me and that went off the screen. It's, you know, when you're, when you're focused on what you're doing, it doesn't necessarily you don't necessarily pay attention to your screen and if any everything's centered and on screen. So then for my circular ones, I took a, uh, uh, it's probably an eighth inch punch and punched all the same colors. And then I just opened the little uh, punch catcher, poured them out onto the table and I did the same process. 
So I'm sticking them to the top cone. So you've got both kinds of sprinkles on the same cone just to make it more visually interesting. You'll probably only get one kind, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It's more fun that way. So I'm just still using my ball stylus to pick them up with a little bit of medium on the ball and make each other all stuck down really well. I dried that up and then um, that area that I was talking about down on the cone uh, where I put the magazine paper, I felt like it was a little bit too dark. So I took a little bit of glazing medium and mixed it with some um, unbleached titanium that was already on my paper palette. And I went over that and then patted it back a little bit and now it blends more into the colors of the cone. It's not quite as dark. So then to finish this, I wanted to do my shadows and highlights like you know I do. I think this makes everything look so much better. So I started with some, well actually I started and finished <laughs> with some uh, fabric Castell pet pins. These are brush pins in lots of colors, comes all together in a set. And I like them because they're India ink, which is a very light, fast, very intense ink that's permanent and I, I feel comfortable using it on this type of a project and it's not going to run with water or fade or anything like that. So these are favorites. So I started with a dark blue. I went around the edges um, and then I'm blending that. You have Before it dries and becomes permanent, you have a couple seconds to blend and I'm blending with a water tank brush. Then I went with some green. I went with some pink. I did some brown. Um, I used all the colors that are coordinating with what I'm doing here. Some bright pink for the cherry. And I got that all shaded with the various colors that went to whatever I was doing. And it really did bring the cone out quite a bit to, to add that, that shading. And then for my highlights, I took a little bit of white Posca pen and squished out some of it. You could just use white paint as well. And I used my water tank brush to apply those highlights in areas that I thought they were needed. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Make sure that you use the hashtag Summer Art Reboot to check out all the other great art coming out today on June 15th, 2019. Uh, you don't want to miss it. And uh, you'll get the current art if you use that hashtag. And if you use the older hashtag, you will get older art. But it's all out there. It's all great summer stuff that might inspire you to get into your craft room and get some stuff done. Um, also, don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to my channel, you might enjoy my over 500 videos. So subscribe if you want to. And of course, share this if you want to share. That's it for me. I really hope that you like my summer ice cream cone for hashtag summer art reboot. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.